You might be really happy right now or really sad right now, depending on which side you're on for the World Series. But we're not here to talk about the World Series. We're here to talk about the MacBook Pro that was just released. And it's basically exactly the same except for the new M4, M4 Pro, and M4 Max processor. And this is really cool. It gets faster. It becomes more energy efficient. Therefore, we get a stated 24-hour battery life, which is pretty cool. Um, but is it enough to buy a new MacBook Pro, especially if you have an M3 version? Uh, and my answer off the top of my head is pretty much no, especially since we're considering Apple is selling a supposedly professional product. And we're talking about a multi-trillion dollar company. And if you're making that kind of profit, you kind of expect a new professional product that's being released every year to have a significant upgrade. And a processor is a significant upgrade, uh, but for example, we still don't get uh, AV1 hardware encoding, which I really hope for. Um, and we're not talking about a humongous increase uh, in processing power. We're talking about an incremental increase in processing power. And to expect Apple to expect their professional users to upgrade very frequently every year uh, without something super significant might be asking too much. Maybe I would be getting a new one if it included Wi-Fi 7. It's still on Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7 to 6E is quite a significant jump for three reasons. Uh, the first is we get a, the ability to bond all the 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz channels together and use the entirety of all three of those throughputs. And th that is quite significant, but of course we're not getting that because we're not getting Wi-Fi 7. And so far the only Apple product that has Wi-Fi 7 is the iPhone uh, 16 Pro. Uh, next up, another reason for Wi-Fi 7 is it has full duplex for the first time ever in a Wi-Fi standard. Uh, what full duplex is, uh, it's just like Ethernet, where you not only get uh, one gigabit up, you get one gigabit down, but at the same time. So what happens with Wi-Fi 6E and below is called half duplex. And that means for every packet you send out, another packet comes in, you know, let's say you're trying to send out and in at the same time. And that discrepancy between having a switch between the two never lets you realize the full potential and those full speeds up and down at the same time. So that's really, really big. Also, if, you, if you've ever um, had to been uploading and downloading at the same time, and you see that the uh, bandwidth isn't really sustained as almost solidly like a hardwired ethernet is, that's yet another reason. Uh, latency is also taken down from 10 to 20 milliseconds down to as low as one millisecond, which is really important for AR and VR applications where you're trying to make everything as instantaneous as possible over a wireless signal to replicate real life. Um, so that's huge as well. Then also the Wi-Fi 7 standard is still getting updated. It's not official right now. Uh, it's not a, an official IEEE specification like Wi-Fi 6E is. Uh, but in theory right now, Wi-Fi 6E maxes out at about 10 gigabit per second and Wi-Fi 7 goes all the way up to 40 gigabit per second. So really significant. And this would be really cool if Apple had introduced it, but they didn't. So right now, if you have a Wi-Fi 7 router and you're in the macOS, iOS, Apple platforms, uh, it's only your new iPhone that's gonna actually take advantage of it. So that's unfortunate. But if that increase, uh, incremental increase in uh, power savings and performance uh, is that important to you, uh, then MacBook Pro M4 is, well, You'd probably be, you probably would put your pre-order in for it already.